Hi folks, it's Andrew here, and today I would like to tell you about this module. This is the D102 output mixer module, and it's a little DIY module that I built for my Eurorack system in 2011. And I want to give you a little bit more uh, insight into how it works. If you go to dintree.com, you can download the schematics and uh, find out more details about it. But essentially, it's all built on protoboard. This was a one-off design. It, it only took me a couple of days to put it together. Um, basically, it's a four-input mixer. This takes the 10-volt peak-to-peak signal from the Euro rack from the output of a VCA or an oscillator or whatever, and outputs a stereo signal. Each channel has a volume control and a pan control, and there's a little output mixer or a output level meter over here. Um, basically, it's built on a stack of boards, as you can see right here, and I'll explain that in a minute. It's all just put, put together on a piece of uh, bare aluminum. The front panel is done with a, a wet transfer kind of a decal paper that's printed in a laser printer. Uh, I'm going to make another video about that that will explain how to do these panels. They don't look great, but they're not bad either. When they're in the system, you can't really tell the difference. Um, unless you look really close. So basically, um, this takes in a, the hot signals, outputs a sort of more of a typical line level signal that you would put like into a mixer or s powered speakers or something like that. So I'm going to go through the circuit design and you can learn how it works. So basically, each of the four channels is the same. Um, there are basically some op amps that take the signals in and they all sum over here and then there's a volume control and then there are some output amplifiers right here and then there's also a tap off of each of the outputs that goes to the uh, meter section which is on a separate page so like every Eurorack module there's a 16 pin connector over here that has the power input and uh, that is only using the plus and minus 12 volts. I know that the power connector also contains 5 volts, but you shouldn't use that. Uh, that will cause you pain. So just think of the Eurorack connector as giving you plus and minus 12 volts. And it's not even pretty particularly well regulated on most modules or on most systems anyway. There's voltage drop on the cables and, and it's feeding a lot of different devices at the same time. So tr treat that as kind of a rough balance supply uh, and uh, so I just have some diodes here and uh, some filtering the filtering is really really minor and then every op amp chip I've used dual op amp chips here every op amp chip uses its own set of bypass capacitors so basically I've used a pair of dual uh, op amps for the inputs there's one per channel or one section per channel and basically what happens here is the input signal comes in here it goes through a 4.7 microfarad capacitor that blocks any DC that might be on the signal maybe a lot of uh, VCAs and things have DC offsets on them and depending on what kind of waveform you're using there could be quite a lot of DC uh, component present goes right into this pot which is a 10k uh, linear pot Actually, no, that's a 100K pot. Uh, this has been a long time since I made this. 100K linear pot. And the trick with a linear pot is that you can make it work like a volume pot. Normally, if you were to just use a linear pot by itself, put, put an audio signal through it and turn it up and down, it will act really strangely. It'll act kind of like, um, you know, you turn it up and you get all the volume right away, and then there's no more volume the rest of the the rotation a lot of guitar amp master volumes work that way and i don't really know why they do that it just makes it really touchy and hard to set the volume correctly anyway by loading down a linear pot with a with a with a smaller impedance you can actually make the linear uh, volume control work at, uh, logarithmically and it, ha and it has a feel more like a regular volume control. So that's essentially what I'm doing here. I'm using this 100k pot. These are just some pots that I that I found at a I think a surplus store somewhere uh, and they were like oh, not that expensive. They're just whatever brand. It doesn't really matter. 
Um, and uh, I'm loading them down with 20k ohms because this is set up like an inverting amplifier. This is an NE5532, which is a pretty classic low noise uh, audio amplifier op amp. Um, and I have a 20k load on that pot. So that's going to give it a better volume control sort of feel to it. Um, it goes through this amplifier, just a gain of negative one. It also has a capacitor across the feedback to limit the high frequency response. Um, and uh, each channel is the same, by the way, so I'm going to only talk about the top uh, channel. Then it goes through a small resistance into another pot. You probably don't really need that resistor there. I always put a, some sort of resistance in the output of an op amp, um, especially when you're doing custom boards. Uh, having a resistor there just means you can stick something in, in the signal path if you need to drop the voltage down or if you need some capacitive coupling or whatever. It's good to just have a, a spot there. Uh, so for good practice, I always just do that. Uh, and then it goes into this dual ganged pot. This is a 10K linear pot. Uh, and it's important that it's linear because uh, the pan pot needs to pretty much be linear. Um, there are different pan laws, they call it, which is, you know, how much will the signal increase uh, when you turn it all the way to one side versus the center? Uh, how much lower it is it in the center? And the rule says somewhere between 3 dB and 6 dB. And it really depends on how you set this up. If you put some load on here, you can make it have a different curve. Uh, but I just used a linear pot. It seems to work pretty well. And the loading on the pot, just like over here, this has some loading that changes its, its, uh, its curve as you turn it up and down. This one actually doesn't have any loading. It goes directly into the non-inverting input of another any 5532 um, but there's no extra load here there is some current going in here because of the type of op amp that this is but it's very very small compared uh, with over here um, so I actually have two op amps one for the left channel and one for the right channel this is the left channel actually and depending on which way you wire up this pot as you turn uh, as you turn the pot one way or another it will short out one of the signals or it will like actually act like a reverse volume control, one on each direction, and uh, you'll get uh, you know more level as you turn it one way and less level as you turn it the other way. So you could sort of analyze it as, okay, if I'm turning it to the right, I'm turning up this one, but at the same time I'm turning down this one, um, and in the center they're going to give half each, so it's going to be six dB down in the middle. Now, you know, some people find the 6 dB down thing is a little bit too dramatic of a, of a pan. Uh, it causes a little bit of a dip in the center. Um, that's pretty popular in radio broadcasting and so on, because when you sum the signals together for mono, then you don't get any additional level, because you, you, you keep the same amount of level across uh, both channels. Um, if you want a more subtle variation, you can adjust this to, to give you, uh, you know, only maybe 3 dB down in the center. So there's a lot of confusion or arguments online. I've seen different articles talking about that. But anyway, this seems to work pretty well for, for synth use. Um, so all the channels have that. So now out the output of the channel is actually two signals. There's a left and a right that's come off the pan pot. And then they all go into a summing node here. And this is a bit of a hack. It only uses one more stage, but it actually works just fine. Um, it's got 10K resistors here that sum the outputs together and then directly into a volume control uh, that goes in and buffers the signal here. So this isn't really a proper summing node. Um, usually you would have an amplifier here that would make sure that this node here is always at zero volts so that, that the channels don't interact with each other at all. But actually this seems to work pretty well. Um, uh, it just saves you having another amplifier stage because I'm really using this amplifier here as the output driver. This is really designed to buffer the signal uh, and send it out, out here. Um, so by putting the 10K resistor in series here, I'm actually dropping the signal by quite a lot, um, at least half. Uh, and then by turning this volume down to a reasonable level, it's dividing it by even more. And I also have this 2.7K resistor here. Uh, this is an audio pot, it says here. I don't know if it's actually an audio pot on the ones that I used. No, it's not. Um, 
So this should probably say KB and not KA because I did put this low resistance here to get that sort of volume curve from this resistance. Um, and if you're not sure about how that works, um, look up parallel resistance calculators or look, at a, look up the formula of how you do that. And uh, you can make an Excel spreadsheet, and this is how I've done it, where you calculate. I usually do different 10 different pot rotations. Um, I'll do that. I'll do a separate video about that to show you. But anyway, I usually do 10 different positions on the rotation, like you know, 0%, 10, 20, 30, 40, etc. Um, and I calculate what the dividing resistance here would be versus this resistance in parallel and figure out the dB attenuation and so on. And, and you can adjust this value to give you pretty much uh, a number of different kinds of curves. Um, so that, that's worth looking at and you can do it easily in a, in a spreadsheet program. And then the only the thing that this does is it just buffers the signal. Again, uh, this has a gain of 2. Um, and then it goes into this uh, resistor here, or this capacitor that's blocking an EDC that might have built up along the way. And then it goes through a 1K resistor to the output jack. Um, this attenuation from here is mostly enough to drop the signal down so that it's the right level for a regular line level output. Because you'll find if you take your synthesizer modules and put them into uh, regular line in on most devices, the directly they're they're pretty hot, and a lot of devices don't have enough attenuation to really uh, get that down. Um, and there's a 100k resistor here to ground uh, connected to the output here, and the reason for that is that when this circuit is off, you want to make sure that this is terminated properly. And notice that this is on the one side of a capacitor. If this capacitor weren't here, I wouldn't have put this in because if you follow the signal back, you should always find a resistive path to ground. And in this case, it would have gone to ground over here. Um, and then that means that when you turn off your circuit and it's still connected to your mixer, let's say your mixer's on, but you've turned off your Eurorack system, now these, these amplifiers are not driving anything. So the output impedance here is not zero or very low anymore. That at the as they would be when the the system's on. Instead, there it's like this device probably went away, and in that case, you don't want to just have a signal that's just hanging off in here on the end of a capacitor or not connected to ground anywhere uh, reasonably close. I'm talking like a few hundred k ohms or something like that, because what'll happen is you'll probably end up hearing a buzz from your system, and I'm sure you've had a device in your in your past that has done this when you turn off the device all of a sudden after a few seconds and the power uh, drains out or the voltage drains off the the rails all of a sudden you hear a buzz in your sound system and that's because there's no resistive termination in the output so a 100k resistor to ground is a pretty good insurance it doesn't really divide or su suck up much current from here and it uh, doesn't change the performance of the circuit really, but it means that when you turn off the circuit, you're going to get a, a reliable uh, termination of your cable. And uh, for longer cables, it's more important because then otherwise the cable ends up looking like an antenna and it can just pick up noise from the air. Um, so that's pretty much the mixer circuit, pretty straightforward. Um, it's basically, you know, only three stages of amplification at maximum. Um, you could probably do it more simply. I've seen some large uh, mixing desk schematics that basically combine the pan pod and the master volume together, um, put one before the other one, and then you can sort of cascade them. Um, it's a little harder to do the calculations because you do lose some signal every time you go through a, a passive uh, part like this. So it's nice to uh, use amplifiers and sort of buffer things. And the noise level in this whole circuit, I can tell you, is like imperceivably low. Um, I've cranked it up and, you know, I can't hear anything. So it, it works fine. So the other half of the circuit is the, me is the meter driver. Um, it just takes a signal off here through some 1K resistors, one for the left and one for the right. And I have a second sheet here that shows how the meter works. So the meter circuit basically is, uh, consists of two parts. It consists of this part. This is a uh, precision full wave rectifier circuit. And it consists of this part, which is a LED bar graph uh, driver. 
This is the LM3915. Uh, I don't know if it's in production anymore. I'm sure you can find clones or surplus ones around. Uh, this was really popular when I was growing up and doing a lot of electronics in high school. I, I built a really huge level meter with Christmas lights that ran off AC, and it used one of these chips to drive it internally. Anyway, this basically is a low side driving LED driver. It has, uh, it has current uh, controlled outputs here. You connect all your LEDs to a positive supply. Notice I've only used every other one because um, there's actually 3 dB output per step. There's 10 outputs, but I only wanted to use 5 LEDs, so I just tapped at every other one, and now I get 6 dB per step, which is what's printed on the front panel. Um, this runs directly off the 12 volts. It just, it just puts current through each of the LEDs, and as the voltage on the input rises, these are connected to precision uh, uh, comparators inside that turn on at at precisely controlled uh, voltages. So essentially what you want is you want to put a DC signal in here that corresponds to your uh, to your level. It needs to be slowed down because you don't want uh, like a you know an AC signal to cause these to flicker on and off. You just want to give a sort of r average voltage of what you've got. So the way that's done is this circuit here actually is designed to slow that signal down. It has a really big capacitor, relatively speaking. It has a 0.1 microfarad capacitor across the feedback here. And that works as an integrator. And what that does is it makes sure that the signal is, uh, is smoothed out. Uh, this is assuming that there's only a positive going signal in here. The AC part has been changed into a DC part. And that's done by this circuit right here. So this smooths it out. There's a little trimmer pot, which you can see here. Is the, there's one for each channel, these little blue trimmers. That lets you calibrate the output. And I wasn't really even sure exactly how this was going to work. This was just a really quick hack together design. I didn't model this or anything. So I just put a pot here. It's a multi-turn pot. And all this does is it just means I can put a test tone in, and then I can just turn this until the segments light as much as I need. In a real commercial design, you would probably make this have a much smaller range, and you would probably choose, you know, plus or minus a few percent or 10 percent or whatever, um, so that you could have a much more careful control. But this has worked fine, and they seem to still be in calibration after a lot of years. Um, so, so yeah, so this is summing two different signals together that are corresponding. To, uh, to, the, to the DC going portion of the signal and then smoothing it out. So here, here's the input. Each channel is the same, obviously, just like the other side. Uh, the input here comes in. It's an AC signal. It could be whatever size. It, does, it doesn't really matter. It's uh, AC coupled here to remove any DC components. And then it goes through this little magic circuit here, which contains an op amp plus some diodes. And uh, basically, I don't, I won't, I won't go into super detail on this, but this basically provides a, a, a rectification type function, just like a full wave rectifier, except it does it without any uh, DC offset uh, on or any bias on the diodes. So the problem with a diode in audio is that you need to put a specific amount of voltage across the diode before it will turn on. And then that means that to make AC into DC in an audio uh, circuit, you can't really use a diode because the audio signals are usually too low. And um, most of the time, the diode wouldn't be conducting. So to make a diode have no uh, voltage drop across it, uh, effectively, in your circuit, you can put a diode across a, a, the feedback of an op amp and that will the op amp will null out any any voltage drop on here by adjusting its output accordingly and by using two diodes in this configuration then both uh, halves of the of the wave are rectified and then you know any signal coming in here you're going to get a pulsating version of it out uh, only the only positive going signals and you sum these two signals together one is from the input directly and the other one is the, the rectified portion and uh, the result is that you'll only have the positive uh, section. And then that's basically it. So this is a really simple mixer. You can build it. If you don't want to build the level meter and then you can just leave off that second, uh, that second sheet and that's actually what's on this board here and I also have the power connector on here but 
this board could have been totally omitted and there's like a, quite a lot of wiring that could be saved by not doing the level meter um, but basically that's it that's how it works so I hope you enjoyed this this video and uh, go and build some modules